Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, sorry for the little bit of delay. Uh, let me share my screen with you guys. Okay, so uh, let me go to the home page so we can talk about that for a bit. And I got some of your emails. Uh, some people emailed me about Unit 3. I replied to you guys. So you can uh, go ahead and drop that off. OK. Uh, you should be able to drop it off now. Uh, let's see. OK. Uh, we acknowledge we are hosting the Lands Mississauga of Onashabi and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the wind that we also recognize enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis and Inuit people. Uh, okay, so, uh, okay, so I, I, I see there's a, another something directly to my, I'll get back to you after that, okay? So unit three people, people that still need to whatever, submit unit three uh, because they missed that deadline. It is open, okay? Uh, you can drop it off, but it's open for a limited period of time. So please drop it off. It was due yesterday. You had the whole weekend uh, and now we're going on to another day, right? You have to know that, you know, you gotta meet these deadlines because things keep coming fast and furious, right? Uh, let me, let me go to the course outline just to kind of show you. There's things coming up next. And maybe look at look at the horizon. Where's the course outline? So you can see the course outlines here on the home page, right? So hopefully you guys would have went and checked that to see like the deadlines are are there for a reason, right? Because you can't hand in unit three, unit four, unit five all in the same time, the same day, and expect me to mark it, right? So you guys gotta really get a handle of these on these deadlines okay for whatever reason it's like is it's like in life right this is teaching you life because if i'm working in a job and i have a deadline for my company and the deadline affects hundreds and thousands of dollars i can't just miss it for whatever reason i, I that's happening like i know there's legitimate reasons that's not what i'm trying to say but even in the real world when there's legitimate reasons you still got to try to make that deadline, okay? So I'm giving you guys some world experience in life. Uh, you know, so here, here it is right here. Uh, where are we? Unit uh, trigonometry. Even though this is unit five, it's unit four. So we did this yesterday. We did this today, right? So there's a quiz for this today. It's due today, okay? Uh, and then there is a review quiz that doesn't count for marks for for the trig. Okay. And then I'm giving you a test today. Okay. The, the test is going to be open after this uh, uh, Zoom session, but it's saying due tomorrow, but I'm actually going to give you till 20th. But I can't go past that because you guys didn't say I have to give you the 20th is what day? Wednesday uh sorry yeah when it's thursday right so i'm going to give you till here but it's it's pushing it because we, you know what we got to go to unit five and then there's things happening in unit five that's due on the 20th right and then there's you got the on friday this friday i'm going to give you the part one of the collimating okay so in the collimating part one part two are both worth 30%, right? So these are the things I still have to mark for those people who are worried, um, you know, the mark is low or will they pass the course, that kind of stuff, because the drop, dead, the drop deadline is the 25th. Well, I have to still mark unit three test. Hopefully that's better than the other test. I still have to mark unit four test. And then you have unit five, uh, this one here, unit five, that has two multiple choice. Uh, so it's not even a uh, handwritten test. It's two multiple choice, okay? Two multiple choice tests, right? 
uh, that I have to mark. But they're multiple choice. So that means they're not, I mean, hopefully they're easier. And I, you, I, you're given multiple attempts. So hopefully that helps to bring up your mark. And then you have the, the collimating, which is worth 30%. Part A, part a is multiple choice. Part B is written, written questions like you do for the unit tests. So there's plenty of marks that can still come your way to improve your mark. So I, you know, don't cons be concerned on the on the on the midterm mark per se. You should be concerned with the final mark because that's the one that stays on your report card. That you know when you go to grade twelve, okay. So you still have time. Midterm is just like a flash. It's just like a snapshot. When I took a snapshot, that's it right now. But be concerned with the final. So you got to do well towards now and the end, okay. So that is important for you guys to, to, to know, okay? Uh, so again, I'm gonna go through this lesson. We're gonna go through periodic behavior, periodic functions, transformations, uh, sketching graphs. So there's a lot to cover a little bit. So I'll cover as much as I can. And then I know there's YouTube videos, okay? And then there's a quiz on this. And then also too, there's uh, a test on this which is due on Wednesday, but I'm gonna give you till Thursday and I can't, can't go past Thursday, but really focus on Wednesday. Focus on getting this done tomorrow by 11.59, okay? Because it, it just keeps coming. That's the whole point about this course. It's fast and furious, like the, like the movie. Okay, so let's go into, okay, let me view it as you guys first because makes things easier for you as a student. Okay. So, trig, should see some video. Okay, so. Mm, This one. Okay, we did this yesterday. Angles. We did this yesterday. Okay, something's going on. Let me maybe view it as a teacher. It's like there's something is missing here. Maybe it's closed off. Okay, uh, so we're gonna go through periodic. Okay, so let's go, this one here is, there's no video, so I'll go through this one. And then there's a video for the next one. And yeah, so let's go through this one quickly. This lesson here. Okay, so periodic behavior. So let's maximize the screen here. Zoom in. Okay, so we need to understand uh, the periodic behavior. And when we're talking about that, because we, you know, we've been talking about sine, cosine, tangent, right? Uh, basically, they're, they're um, periodic behavior means that something repeats after a certain amount of time, okay? So that is the key. Something repeats after a certain amount of time. So now let's look at what the definitions are. A function that has a pattern of Y values that repeats at regular intervals, okay? So a that, that's a periodic function. Right, and that is the whole idea. So your your y values repeat after regular intervals. Cycle is one complete repetition of a pattern. So let me give you an example. As I'm talking, and I think I'm just giving an example. Oops, my pen doesn't work because there's no battery in it. My pen inside. Learn to put my battery in the pen. 
Okay. Give me a second. Okay, my pen mouse should work. So here is, you know, your X and Y. And when we say something repeats, so this is what we're talking about. Okay. So you can see it repeated. So it's gonna it's gonna repeat again, but it starts started here and then it ended here and it's gonna repeat. So that is like a one cycle, right? And it can continue for a, for basically if you're looking at the range or the, the the domain, it can continue forever, right? But if you're looking at the at the range, which is the Y, it has a limit. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about that's a periodic function. Okay. The period of length. So period is the horizontal length of the cycle of the graph. Okay. So the 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 x value is how long is the the length of time it takes to repeat. Okay. The amplitude is this between the max and min of the periodic table of the periodic function. Okay, so let's get into examples because we're we need to see that. So here we go. Okay. So if I look at this one here, determine whether the function is a periodic or not. If it's a, if it is, state the periodic, state the period of the function. Okay, so let's look at this. This is a periodic function because it repeats. You can see here's one pattern. And then the pattern repeats again over here. So the period is for one cycle of the pattern. So it takes, uh, the period is going to be minus six because it's from here to here is how long it took to repeat. Okay. And it repeats again. Now here you can use, you know, uh, in periodic functions, your X can be the angle can be the time, it could be, uh, basically is an independent variable. So time is independent variable, uh, angle is independent variable. So that's what usually you have on, on the x-axis, okay? And y could be something obviously is, is dependent on the x, okay? Now we're looking at this one. Is this one a, a periodic function? No, because nothing here repeats. Okay, so it's not a periodic function. And then we can look at this one here. Uh, this is a periodic function? Yes, it is, because you can see it repeats. It repeats like right here, from here to here repeats, from there to there repeats, from there to there repeats. So it repeats. That's what, and then, then the question says, what's my amplitude? Your amplitude is the difference between your max and min and you divide it by two. So the, the amplitude, it says right there, the amplitude is half the, half the difference between the max and min, okay? So the amplitude is the line that's in between, is the distance in between your max to your midline or your, mid, or your minimum value to your midline. Okay. Uh, and here it is a repeat. Yes, it does. Okay. The period repeats it like from here to here repeats. Okay. And what is my amplitude? My amplitude and the amplitude. And let me use a different color. Uh, I'll use black. The amplitude is basically the midpoint between your max and min. Okay, in between your max and min. Okay, so if my if my amplitude from here to here is five over two, I guess five over two is two point five, right? From here to here is two point five. That means from here to here is two point five. Okay, All right? And you can see here if you look at it. Three to minus two, that difference is five, right? 
So that means in between would be 2.5. Okay. Whatever, wherever 2.5 falls under, right? Okay. Uh, then let's go down to the next part. For the, for the function. Okay, so now with this one here, for the function, it's saying, you know, determine what is f of 2 and f of 5. Well, that's kind of easy. All you do is look at, okay, when f of 2, when we say what's f of 2, we're saying the y there, what's the y, and what's the y there, right? What's the y there? So when y is 2, when x is 2, y is 1. When uh, x is 5, y is zero okay you can see that right there okay and you can see that on the graph okay um give me a second uh, um, Okay, so uh, we go to here, right? So then basically here, why, uh, why, what is y when x is eight? What is uh, y when x is 10 and so on, right? Again, you can find that from the graph. That's not a big deal. Okay. So here is an, an example of a problem question. Okay, uh, cutting, uh, cutting machine chops strips of plastic into appropriate lengths. The following graph shows the motion of the cutting blade on the machine in terms of time. Okay, so in terms of time. Okay, so you have here my X is time, my height, right? Which shows the height of the cutting blade because the blade goes up and down. This is what the actual happening here, but you can put that into a periodic function, right? Because the, pit, the blade coming down, it comes down at a certain cycle, meaning every, maybe every five seconds, it comes down and chops. Every five seconds, it comes down and chops. This could be, this could represent like a machine at a factory, okay? The machine at a factory is maybe cutting uh, pieces of plastic and they all have to be the same length. So in order for them to be the same length, it has to cut it at the same time, at the same, at the same spot. Okay, so basically, uh, and coming down from the same height, right? So the height where it starts is at maybe 0.5 centimeters above the, the ground, right? And then it goes down. So let's say the beginning here goes down, let's say this is 3.5. Then it rises back up. And then when's the next time it goes down again? At 7.5. Then goes back up again. Okay, so from here to here, from that period or that point to that point, it repeated, right? So we can say four. It started at four. Because you gotta you can find up you gotta find points that make it uh, easy to do calculations, right? So it started at four. And it went back and the beginning part is at eight. So then if I look at that, my period would be four, okay? It would be four sections. Four sections, four seconds is my period. Now my amplitude, my amplitude is made up of your max height and your minimum height, subtract the difference and divide by two. So if I subtract the difference and divide by two, okay? Uh, so my, my max height is 0.5, my min is zero. Subtract the two, well, it's gonna be 0.5 and divided by two is be 0.25. So that's what you got here, right? Max and min, max minus min, da da, da. So my amplitude is two, 0 0.25, okay? 
and my period is four seconds. So every four seconds it repeats in my midline of the max height and the, the ground is 0.25. Okay. Okay, now it says here, state the next two times the blade will strike the cutting book, cutting surface. Well, you could basically just say the next two times would be right now, or hitting the cutting surface, right? So it hit the cutting surface at 7.5. So we know it repeats every four seconds. So if it hit it at 7.5, it will hit it again after another four seconds, right? So there you go. Here, it hit it hit the ground at 7.5. I add another four. That's when the height is going to be zero. So 11.5, the height is zero. And then if I add another four seconds to 11.5, that'll take me to 15.5. That's when it hits the ground again. So it repeats every four seconds, it'll hit the ground. So these are the times it will hit the ground or hit the table or hit the striking of the surface is 11.5 and 15.5. Okay, so you can see how that repeats. Uh, so we went through that lesson. Okay, let us minimize the screen. Uh, okay, so. And then there's questions on that, right? So you can go through the questions. Here is a graphing of the periodic functions, right? So here's a graph of the sine, cosine, and tangent. So we'll go through that a little bit. Uh, the main ones you really want to be looking at is the sine and cosine. This tangent one, it's, it's complicated. You can see there's asymptotes every every because uh, yeah, let me let's go through the lesson before I start talking about it. A lot of people don't know this, but the best way to make money on YouTube in 2023 is not by becoming. Let's look at how we can relate the primary trig ratio sine, cos, and tan to the unit circle. Remember, a unit circle is a circle centered at the origin with the radius of one. Um, how we can rate the three, my, three primary trig ratios to this unit circle, and then use that relationship to help graph what um, sine theta and cos theta actually are going to look like graphically. So we'll graph sine theta in yellow there, we'll graph, we'll graph cos theta in green down here. Okay, so the reason why you're showing a circle, we're coming off the circle, which is a unit circle. The reason why we call it a unit circle is because the radius is one, one unit. That's why you have one, one, one here. So it's relating to the unit circle, right? My Y value can't be any bigger than one. Because when you think about it, if this, if this is a circle and the, the radius is one unit, that means my y can never be bigger than one and it can never be bigger than or lower than negative one and my x can't be any bigger than one or uh less than negative one okay so that's what we're doing but also too when we're looking at the unit circle there's degrees here right because we're going in a circle so there's a degrees so you have 0 90 180 270 360 right those are like that so and then, and things, if you were to have like a, 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 a terminal arm, it can repeat. And we just did yesterday where some trig ratios repeat at different, um, at different angles, right? So you can get a trig ratio that will repeat, say in this quadrant, because remember this quadrant here, that I'm using my mouse, this quadrant, if you do the cast, this is, this side is, so I'm using black, you're not gonna see nothing with black. This is A, uh, C, A, S, T, right? So trig ratios can, can, can repeat in A, and if I'm looking at sine, it can repeat in, in A quadrant and also in sine quadrant. Or it can repeat, if I'm talking about tan, it can repeat in A quadrant 
or in, in the tangent quadrant, because this one says all, right? All of these uh, trig ratios are positive. This one's going to be positive only in this quadrant, the sine. The tan is going to be positive only in this one. And then cosine is going to be positive in this one. So there's a correlation to this graph that we're doing here, and then this unit circle graph. OK, and that's what he's going to explain. So let's go through that. But first, let's remember the relationship between the primary trig ratios and the unit circle. So keep in mind, uh, three, three primary trig ratios are sine, cos, and tan. And you know the word SOHCAHTOA tells you that sine of... OK, so let me just fast forward a little bit so we can get into some stuff here. We, we, we talked about the SOHCAHTOA stuff. Okay, so okay, let's see where we are. So it just tells you the distance between the x-axis and the point that intersects the unit circle. Cos theta is equal to okay. We know cos theta. We know sine theta. So let us get back to graph okay so he's talking about it about here let's go back just a little bit you why so if i want sine of zero degrees. I just need to look at the y coordinate of where it intersects the unit circle. Okay, so we, we know, so the other thing too we should remember is that that is your y and that is your, your x, right? Your y is made up of, uh, is considered as sine theta and your x is considered a cos theta, okay? Because it's a unit circle, right? The values of the x and y make up your, your sine and cosine trig ratio, okay? So there's gonna be a correlation now, whatever value it is for my x and y, that means it's gonna be the value for my sine and cos, right? That's what's gonna mean. So over here, if I go over here, my x and y would be, my x would be zero, my y would be negative one. That means my x is zero, my y is negative one. That means my cos is gonna be zero and my y is gonna be negative one. This will correlate to this graph here, okay? Your sinusoidal graph, it's gonna correlate. And then this one here too, okay? It's gonna correlate. So let's go. We clear that circle when we've rotated zero degrees from the initial arm. The y coordinate is zero, so sine of zero on the graph is going to start right here. It's going to have a sine ratio of zero. What if we want to do sine of 90 degrees? What if we rotate 90 degrees and now it's going to intersect the unit circle right here at the point zero, one? Well, the y coordinate of that point is one. So sine of 90 is equal to one. So when we've rotated 90 degrees, the sine ratio is now one. And now that's the furthest we're ever going to get from the x-axis as we rotate around the unit circle. So the, the biggest the sine ratio is ever going to be is one. So when we've rotated 90 degrees from the initial arm, the sine ratio is one. What if we've rotated 180 degrees? We rotate 180 degrees, it's now going to intersect the unit circle right here at the point negative 1, 0. Well, the y coordinate of that point is 0, so sine of 180, we are back to 0. So the ratio, when we rotate 180 degrees, is back to 0. So if you can see, he's plotting on this graph here, and I'll, I'll kind of fill it in. Uh, I'll use blue. But you can see, 
I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can actually draw that it's gonna be, it's gonna be like this, right? Right? Something like that. Over here, when and this is a sine curve, right? So when sine is zero, right, when the angle is zero, my so sine is zero, my uh, y is zero, my x is zero. Okay. Well, we're saying, well, yeah, my my x is zero and my y is zero. Uh, when it's sine ninety, right? Uh, sine ninety. That means my y is one. And if you look at the unit circle, my y is one. And then when it's one eighty. Uh, when my angle is 180, my uh, my sine is zero, okay. And when 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 the angle is 360 over here, my sine is zero, right? So, and then this would be opposite because remember uh, this is dealing with um, here is dealing with this your y component of your coordinate on the unit circle, okay? And this is going to deal with the cos. We'll deal with the x coordinate around the unit circle, right? And then from the unit circle, you draw on the sinusoidal the different the waves and it repeats, okay? So he's going to go through that a little bit more. Let me just clear this so I can. Much. How about when we've rotated from the initial arm when we rotate 270 degrees? So the terminal arm is now going to intersect the unit circle right here at the point 0, negative 1. Now that has a y coordinate of negative 1. So sine of 270 is equal to negative 1. So 270. Is that negative one? And how about if we rotate all the way back around to the start? Like, so that's now, what you get, right? Continue. Remember, this function is periodic. So <clears throat> this pattern of y values oscillating between one and negative one is going to continue um, every 360 degrees. And we could also rotate in the negative direction. We've rotated 270, the x coordinate. So now, so now we're doing the x coordinate over here, right? The x coordinate. Right, and the x coordinate is all is made up of the cos, right? So now you're going to be plotting the x coordinate here for the unit circle, and basically that's your cos values of the basically coordinates around the circle, right? So you're going to have something like that, right? When the angle is zero, when the angle is zero, the angle is zero here. What's my what is my on the unit circle, what's my y and x? Or well, actually, let's look at x. What's my x? When the angle is 0, my x is 1 up there. When the angle is 90, my x is 0, right? When the angle is 180, my x is negative 1 down here. And when my angle is 0, sorry, 270, my x is 0. And when my angle is 360, my x is 1. So it goes up here again. So see how it repeats? This repeats, okay? So we're done with that. Okay, and basically, uh, here is the lesson in words, what I just went through. Let's just look at that. Okay, so this one here, we won't go through it, but basically uh, everything here is coming from your, uh, is basically your, if you, this is my sine graph, right? It's coming from the unit circle, okay? So I won't go through this because we kind of went through it with the video. So let's go on to the next thing.
uh, transformations. Oh, transformations. Oh, well, everything has to move again. Just like in exponential functions, things have to uh, move. In uh, in in uh, trig functions, things also move again, right? The trigs move. Okay, so transformation of sine and cosine, lovely, right? But it's the same kind of thing. You have your a, your k, your d, and your c. Okay, same kind of stuff here. Uh, let us. Is that due? No, that's not due today. If I do that, that means due tomorrow. Let's just double check. What was the, on the agenda? Was it transformations as well? Yeah, transformations. Okay, so I'll do transformations. Uh, hmm, interesting. Let me just check something here. Yeah, that's it, because you know what? Every This is the last day for unit uh, four. So it is all of this, okay. So all this is in for the, the test that's gonna be opened up later on today. Uh, I mean, right after this session. So let's go back. So let's do the transformations. I have to change the date, but it doesn't matter. You guys don't really submit uh, the worksheets, I noticed. So let's go to transformations. Okay. So let us look at it like this. Zoom in. Okay, so when we look at the transformations of a function, uh, we have similar values that we had for um, when we did transformations of a quadratic, transformations for the last one was an exponential function. We have your A, we have your D and your C and your K, okay? So those things, the only thing is now, things may be a little bit different as far as naming. A is your amplitude, which can be a stretch or compression of your uh, sine function or your cosine function. And then K is the period. K value gives you the period and the period is equal to 360 divided by K, right? So, uh, so horizontal stretch or compression is by a factor of one over k. So I have a k, that means I have to have one over k to determine if it's a compression or a uh, stretch. If the value of one over k is greater than greater than one, then you know it's a stretch. If, it's, if the value of the one over k is less than one, then you know it's a compression. And then you have your, your phases, that's basically your up and down. And then you have the, your, sorry, your phases is shift left and right. And your vertical is basically up and down, okay? So now when we look at this, this is a basic, this is what we call the parent function. This would be the parent sine function, right? So when, when my angle is zero, X is the angle now, okay? So maybe we need to understand that X is your angle and Y is your Y, but this is uh, your angle. So X is zero, Y is zero. When X is 90 degrees, your Y, and this we did it from the video, right? So this is just showing the parent function. And then we wanna basically transform this. We wanna either sh stretch it up, uh, compress it, uh, you know, shift everything up. So that's what we're doing with the transformation. Here's your cosine. Now here's an example of a transformation. Simple one. My original uh, sine function is y is equal to sine over x, sine x. So now what's happening to your transformation is when you look at it, my, my y is in front of the sine. So my y is gonna double 
it looks like my X's don't, nothing changes with my X's, right? But with my Y, it changes. Uh, my Y coordinate, it will double, and then you add one. So if I do that, if Y is originally zero, it goes to one. If Y is originally two, it goes to three, okay? So there's a, there's a transformation where it's looks like it's stretching and then it's moving up, right? So it's it's stretched a little bit and it moved up. So the center line, that's your midpoint, is based on uh, based on what's the amplitude. So with my amplitude. Right, my amplitude of of this. Now, how do you figure out what the amplitude is? Well, my amplitude is going to be uh, it's going to be two. Now, how did we get two? Two is up here. Two is what you have there is the number in front of your, your function, your trig function, right? Because when we go back to the beginning, here, A is your amplitude right there. The number in front of your trig function is the amplitude, okay? So when we go back to here, oops, went too quick. A is my amplitude. Now then the question is, what is my K? K is, there's no, a K is one. Okay, uh, my bad, K is, yeah, K is one, but then you need to have K in order to de determine the period. Because when we go back up here, right? My K is one, because you can see there's nothing in, the, in that function there. There's no number there, so therefore it's one. But K you need to determine for your period. So it'd be 360 divided by K, and if a K is one, then 360 divided by one is just still just 360, right? So my period is 360. What does that mean? Every 360 degrees, it repeats. It started at zero, and then at 360 again, you can see it's gonna start repeating. So that is my period for this function. And then the question is how many cycles in one, in? Uh, in 360, in 360 degrees. Well, only one, only it only repeats once. So it's only one time uh, the cycle. You only have one cycle in 360, okay? So let's look at another example. There's a little bit more stuff happening in this one. You can see uh, my Y is equal to this trig function, right? When I look at it, my amplitude is the number in front. So my amplitude is negative 1.5. Okay. Uh, my K is three. That means my uh, compression or stretch will be by a factor of one over three. Well, one over three, since it's a decimal, that means it's gonna be a compression. And then here I have 30 degrees. So that means it moves 30 degrees along the x-axis. And then 0.5, that means it moves up by 0.5 on the y-axis, okay? So here's my regular parent function of my cos, okay? That's what I have there. And then here is my transformation. So if I just look at the x, my X values are made up of the K and the, the D, okay? K and D, right? This is the, this 30 is gonna be the D value. Just like, let's just go back up. I just wanna make sure you guys understand what I said, right? The D and the K represent how it affects us on the X. The A and the C represents how it affects us on the Y. So if I look at, how it's affecting on the K, sorry, on the C, but uh, on the, the D, sorry. If I wanna see how it affects the X axis, then I look at K and D. So let's look at K and D for that question. So my K 
is three, that means my factor is one over three. So it's gonna be one over three that's gonna to apply to the X. And then my, uh, my phase, which is C, is 30 degrees. So for every X that I have here on the original parent function, I have to divide it by three and add 30. So what, zero divided by three is zero. And then if I add 30, it's gonna be 30 degrees. Now I go back to, I go to the next one, 90 divided by three is what, 30. And then I add 30, it's gonna be 60 degrees. Uh, 180 divided by three is uh, six, uh, 60. And then 60 plus three, so plus 30 gives you 90s and so on, you can see. And then my, my Y value changes based on this transformation. I got negative 1.5, okay. How do I get negative 1.5? That's the A. And then my, my 0.5 is the C, right? So for every Y value here, I apply negative 1.5 and I add 0.5. And that's how I got these numbers. And if I plot this, you can see that uh, it's shifted. This is, a, this is a cosine function, but it's shifted, right? Normally a cosine function, so we know the parent, how the parent function looks. Let's see that. Let me draw the parent function up here. For a parent function, for the cosine, we know it starts up here. And then uh, at 90, it's zero, right? Uh, yeah. And at, at uh, 180, it is at negative one. See this, you can see how much, how wide this is right now. The original is gonna be wide. And then at uh, 270, my X is zero. And it goes off, because it has to go all the way to 360. Right, so this is the original function. It's supposed to go up, right? But now look how much it shrunk, right? This is the original function, function, but you can see now this one here, it shrunk, put it this way, it got stretched. And uh, and then it also shifted, it shifted up, right? It shifted up, okay? So um, basically that's sort of the, the gist of that. Let me just cancel this, okay? And here is, so, okay, let's just finish this one up. The amplitude is 1.5 because that's what you get from the uh, equation. The period is now one divided by, it's 360 divided by K, so it becomes 120. So the original, so, the, so this repeats every 120, right? Now that makes sense because you can see when I drew it, I drew it and it's the, the original parent function, the period is 360, right? The original of this one here, you can see it's 360. It repeats at 360. You can see here at zero to 360, it repeats at 360. Over here, this repeated at 150. So you can see there's more, there's more of uh, in if it's if you're looking at between zero to 360, this will repeat more times than this one between the angle of zero and 360. This only does it once. This one can probably do, uh, if I do, uh, looks like it repeats every 150. So that means at 300 is gonna repeat again, while this one is still trying to do its first, its first uh, cycle, okay? And then here is, here's another example, okay? Uh, and then so on. I'll let you look at this example on your own. You can see all the 
the, the, the transformation and the original. Okay. So let me stop with this one. You guys can do that on your own because we're running out of time. Uh, and then there is uh, a lesson worksheet for that. Here is uh, the lesson for uh, an application question. So let's just do, let's see how much we can do in the amount of time we got. I think I got, uh, probably have to go to 10, 10. Okay, so we're gonna zoom this. So this is just saying, remember the unit circle, which we do. I uh, don't have to repeat that. So we know the values of on the unit circle, X and Y, uh, X would be your coast, Y would be your sign, okay? And 10, obviously we know 10 from other uh, lessons that 10 is equal to uh, either sign, it's the sign divided by cosine, right? Okay, so sine function. Yeah, I got your Zane, I got your thing, okay? Uh, so let's look at this example, modeling with graphs. You are in a car, uh, you're in the car of a Ferris wheel. The wheel has a radius of eight meters and turns clockwise. Let the origin be the center of the wheel. Uh, begin your sketch when the radius of the center of the wheel uh, when, let's begin your sketch when the radius from the center of the wheel to your car is along the positive X axis. Okay, so if you're looking at uh, sketch a graph, uh, vertical displacement. So imagine this whole thing is of this Ferris wheel, the circle here. Okay, uh, at, this, at this point here, where my mouse is, uh, the the X is at eight. That's just basically the radius. It can't be any bigger than eight. And then my I'm on the I'm on the center point, which is going to be zero. So you can see how this turning will represent a sine curve. The only thing is that so since this is uh, your your uh, radius, right? When you were to, when you are to draw this out, you're going to be having it go to eight, right? Instead of one, because this is not a unit circle. It looks like a unit circle. Unit circle would be one, but this is the radius of the Ferris wheel. So basically, and we're looking at from the center of the Ferris wheel. So that's going to be at 90, the radius is the, the, the max, right, is going to be uh, eight. And when it's at, uh, when it's at negative eight, the angle is at 270, okay? Now, now uh, the same, do the same thing for the coast. Well, again, we know that between these coordinates, uh, the eight is the cos, the y is the zero, the eight is a cos, sorry, the zero is a cos here, and then y is negative eight. So you draw the same circle, right? And now you wanna do it in form of cosine uh, uh, trig function, right? So when, uh, when x is, uh, let's look at this again. When X is eight, uh, Y, oh, actually let's look at it from here. Uh, when X is zero, Y is eight. Okay. This is supposed to be eight, not nine. I don't know why it does that. That's two, four, six, eight two, four, six, eight. That's not nine, it's supposed to be eight, okay? So don't get confused there. That's supposed to be eight. That was gonna be confused. So when X is zero, Y is eight, right? And then when X is negative uh, eight, 
I shouldn't say negative eight, when X is at uh, 180 degrees, right? Then my y, y is negative eight, okay? Uh, so now, this is just telling you the relationship between cos and, uh, and sine. That's all it's telling you. So here's a real question now, a real problem question. The real problem question here is a carousel rotates at a constant speed. It has a diameter of 15 meters, a horse that is directly in line or in the line with the center horizontally rotates uh, around three full times. Create a graph that models the horizontal distance from the center as the horse rotates around. Okay, so the horse rotates around uh, the Ferris wheel. The diameter of the, of the Ferris wheel is 15. So the horse, say the horse is over here. I'll put a little sticky person here. Say the horse is over here, right? It's gonna rotate around, right? It's gonna rotate around, right? So that rotation is the path of the horse compared to the, the center. So from here to here, you know it's 15. Oh, sorry, not 15. We didn't say not 15, it's actually 7.5. The diameter is 15. So you know the diameter is actually uh, seven. Right, diameter seven. So that tells you that, or 7.5, that means my max is gonna be 7.5. Okay. And my min is gonna be negative 7.5 on my, uh, on, my uh, on my trig ratio, on my, on my graph, okay? So 7.5 and 7.5, okay? Now, what has to happen is, what's it asking? Create a graph that models the horizontal distance from the center. So, you know, your max is 7.5, your min is 7.5. So now you wanna basically get these points on this unit, on this circle, and you plot them here. That will, and then you draw the line, that will give you your, your graph, okay? So uh, when x is 7.5, y is 0. When x is 0, y is 7.5. Sorry, when x is 0, we know y is 7.5, but my angle is 90 because we're writing this in, in angles. So you go there, there. And when my x is negative 7.5, sorry, when my when my, we're dealing with y for this, right? When my y is zero, my angle is 180. When my y is negative 7.5, my angle is 270. And when my angle is 360, my y is zero, or sorry, my y is uh, 7.5. Okay, that's what you're doing with that from here to there, and just repeat that. Okay. Uh, let me clear that. Okay, so let's scroll down. Here is another example. Modeling equation based on the graph. So you're gonna have to have a graph and then come up with the equation from the graph, okay? So if I look at this graph here, uh, I can figure out what's my amplitude, 
right? The difference between your max and min. I can figure out what's my period, how long it takes to repeat. I can figure out what my, my uh, center line is. My center line is the max plus the min divided by two. Or, or you can say um, uh, the max, which is 11, minus the amplitude. We know the amplitude to be five. So the max minus the amplitude will give me my will give me the value of my center line, which is here. So my max is eleven minus my amplitude. My amplitude was five. Therefore, my uh, my midline is going to be six. Okay. Now the, there's a couple of things that are new here: d cos and d sine. Okay. D cos represents, let's go back up here. Uh, it's not showing. Oh, D cos was in actually in our, we have to go back into the, into the previous lesson, but I'll show you how you can get D cos. But we're gonna go here because time is wasting. Uh, my D cos is basically uh, when I when I get to when's my max? When do I get to my max height? What value is my max height at? What's the value of x when I'm at my max height? The value of x when I'm at the, my max height, the first value of x of when my max height is, it's going to be up here. So my x is going to be 10. OK, that's my max height. OK, so uh, there's a relationship between d cos and d sine. And the relationship is this, this formula there. Okay, so that formula you can allows you to find the d. Well, you know the d cos is that your maximum, your maximum value of y. What's the x value? And then in order to get the sine, the d sine, all you're going to do is get it's going to be this formula: 90 minus my my uh, my k value. So if my k value here is 4, 90 divided by 4 gives me uh, 12.5, sorry, my bad, I, I didn't, uh, I have here 10. So 10 minus 90 divided by four gives me 12.5. That will basically give me uh, minus 12.5. It gives me my, my D sine, because what happens is you can write the equation two ways, right? And that is what we're showing you here. You can write the equation. This equation here, this graph can be written in, 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 a, in a, using cos or it can be written as using sine. So you can see here, I, can, I wrote it using cos and I wrote it using sine, right? So you can see here, my D sine, which is what goes inside here, was negative 12.5. So I put here negative 12.5. My D cos was 10, so I put here a 10. Right, and the same thing applies. If it's a negative, that means when I go into this equation, it has to be a positive. And my six is the is my center line, my new center line. So my new center line is six. I, I figured it right there. Okay, so you need all these things in order to figure out the equation. And then the question would be, well, what's John's height above the ground after 78 seconds? OK, so 78 seconds. This whole thing is done in seconds. So all I have to do here, put my x value inside here as uh, 78. Or I can do this one, doesn't matter. And then pl plug it in here. And I do the calculation. And then get my max, when well, my height 
is 66.2 meters at uh, 78 seconds. So 78 seconds. So probably about here. With my Y, 6.2. So somewhere here, 6.2. Yeah, my bad, 6.2. Okay. Here's another example, but I'm gonna have to stop here um, because we're running out of time. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna stop recording. I'm gonna share this. Let's, let me actually, before I go back, let me not, let me not, let me share one more thing. Okay, so we close this. Okay, so going back to here, like I said, people, uh, unit three is opened. And let me just see, I just opened it up. So if you didn't submit your unit three, please submit it. Let's see, All right? So some people haven't submitted, it looks like. So you can still submit. You can see I expanded it for today, okay? So people still submit it. So I don't know, if you can't submit it, then uh, find a way, right? Because I opened it up for you, you can see, okay? And then uh, the test, I'm gonna open it up today and it's gonna be due on the 20th. No, my bad. It's gonna be due tomorrow, but I'm giving you until the 20th, okay? So I'm gonna do these things right now after the meeting. And yeah, so there's also a quiz for today for the stuff we did today. So do that, got two tries for that. Okay, I, I'll, I'll look into that, okay? So we'll, we'll look into that, Zane, okay? Uh, after the meeting. Okay, so that is it, guys. Let me stop sharing. I'll let you guys go, do your stuff, it's 10, Team, you guys have the rest of the day to work on your stuff. Okay, so have a good day, guys. Take care. Bye. Zane, try PDF, okay? So, okay. Um, hi. The problem is that it's not letting me submit anything it just says that um you already submitted once you can't submit again so that was my problem you can't submit Sorry. another file you can't yeah file. like i've tried the thing is it doesn't it didn't let me submit um all my files at once because it was like too powerful so okay, i decided so to, like, so okay how are you, what's the file type is it a is it a picture is it a it's like a picture. It's like from no. My... That's that. That's the problem. It's it, there's a maximum. There's a maximum size. Mm -hmm. Do it as a PDF. Oh. And I, and I, and I realized yeah. I, I knew it was you because I'm thinking you're doing these big pictures. It it doesn't take it. You need to have a do the PDF. Okay. Take, just scan as a PDF. It should work. Because you, okay. you're the only one I'm having issues with. So I know it's your file type. That's why. It's it is that, but also. Um, it's just not letting me submit another file, which even if it was PDF, it's just completely Okay, try closed. the PDF so I can see. Just do it, do it right now as a PDF. Because it definitely Wait, is the PDF. Um, would I be allowed to like show you what I'm seeing? No. Because it just What do you says, mean, on your screen? Yeah, on my screen, all it says is um, you okay, have already see. submitted to this folder and cannot submit again. Okay. Uh, okay, so what I'll do, let me just give me a second. Stay yeah, stay course. on the line. Which one was it? Um, so I just had to submit what? for one question for communication and thinking. Is that was so, unit three? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So let me let me go and see. So communication and thinking, right? Yeah.
and you already submitted, but it won't yeah, allow it you. Yeah, it was just one of the questions, you know. Um. Okay, let me see here what's going on. Let me save it as a PDF just so I can submit it right now. So you, you need three you need the three pictures. Can you just do one 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 PDF for all of them? I'll I'll do that. I can do that. Okay. So let me uh Here, let me just say here. Uh, give me a sec. That's weird. Okay, just hold on. Let me just check something. Okay, try it now. Okay, let me refresh. Yeah, no, it still says you have already submitted to this folder and cannot submit again. That doesn't make any sense. You submitted two two pictures already. Yeah, I had one more question. Yeah, I Did know, you? but uh, it's not, that's weird. I know. Mm. It, oh, it worked for communication. It's letting me um submit yeah, something. Yeah, because I just did. I, I just I did that one. Okay. I did that one. Thank you. So, yeah. So now it should work for the. Thank you. I didn't know. I didn't know which one you're checking. Yeah, yeah. It should work for. It should work. Oh for yeah, it yeah. It's perfect now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and. Yeah. Okay. So you're I'll good. send it as a PDF this time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank yeah. you. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. Okay. You too. Uh, Eve. Eve, Sean, are you there?